All right. This will be fun. Yeah, you're directing this. Oh fuck, I get so <laughs> awkward when I do this. You're directing oh, this. Oh my, it's your channel. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am here with my fantastic hairdresser, Sarah. Hi. She comes from the salon 266. Salon 266 in Darlinghurst. Yes. Yes. Today we are here to give you everything you need to know for hair. Yep. Being a little bit specific to blondes, but we're not discriminating. Everything we're talking about today can be used for all hair types, all hair colours. Brunettes are still going to get some love in this video. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. Yeah. But it's basically a healthy hair guide, everything you need to know, one-stop shop, we're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Answering your questions specifically. <laughs> I put a uh, ask me anything up on Instagram. I said that I'd be sitting down with Sarah. You guys sent through so many questions. Like a lot. Sarah and all her expertise, she's so knowledgeable, is going to answer all these questions. Well, not all of them because there's so many. But she's going to answer the most commonly asked questions plus a few others. Jump into it. <laughs> okay, let's just debunk this shall we is okay sarah my hairdresser do i or do i not have naturally blonde hair you do in hairdresser terms but people that aren't hairdressers are probably going to disagree with it and cassidy's hair is not this color from here to here naturally although her root color is a shade of blonde i would say that it's a dark blonde in one go, 100%, don't do that unless you want your hair to... Would that even be possible? Yeah, it would, but like, your hair would start falling off. Would you go from fall... like your colour to my colour in one go? No. You can. <clears throat> it will happen. But what will happen is it will go to jelly and start falling out in, in the chair then and there. Honestly, never jump up more than three to four shades lighter in one session. Just don't do it. Say to go from your colour to my colour? Yeah. How many... For the um, safest way, many? I'd probably say four sessions. Okay. Yeah. For, you know... How many weeks apart each session? Four to six? Oh, months apart. So, months I, yeah, I would probably, for the healthiest way possible, I would leave it for about three months in between each one. Wow, okay. It's going to be a year journey. Yeah. If you want it done the right way. You don't. <laughs> Not possible. <laughs> you, like, if you have a fear of scissors, maybe you need to start seeing a different hairdresser. Once a split end is a split end, it's a split end, pretty much. So it has to no be cut off. No repairing it. No. There's no such thing as avocado and a tablespoon of honey mixed with some yogurt. It's going to get rid of your split ends. <laughs> this is how I explain it to my clients. So, you know when you're wrapping a present and you've got like those, like the ribbon that you tie it around with and you go to make it curly? So, when you... Do the scissor trick. Do the scissor trick with the, you know, trying to make it curly. That's a split end. That's what happens to a hair shaft. It, like, starts splitting and you get all these little curly bits. And that is what frizz is, essentially. It's all your split ends showing. Dumbfounded, I know. Cutting up the hair like this. So your split ends are going to stick out, right? Yeah. So if you cut up the hair like this, you're just cutting off those split ends rather than cutting the length off the bottom. You're blonde and you just went to Fiji. Was there anything that you did in particular? Did you find that your hair colour like kind of changed when you went in? Did you even go <coughs> swimming in the water? Yeah, every day. Like you got your hair wet? Yep, every day. Every fucking day. Okay. Sorry, Sarah. <laughs> I'm like, okay, tell <laughs> you the truth now. I saw it like in braids, wet on a boat. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I know that I didn't take over purple shampoo. I conditioned it with a treatment every day. Did you do that before you went in the water as well? No, just when I got out. If you're wanting to protect it from like chlorine, um, you know, and discoloration, I would probably suggest putting either serum or conditioner in and then plaiting it prior to jumping in to the ocean and always rinse that out straight away. So like, like it out. the conditioner that you'd use in the shower? Yeah, just the conditioner yeah. you use in the shower. Just apply it all over on dry hair even. Plait it so it stays in for longer. <laughs> when you come out of the sea, rinse it out straight away. Um, yeah, and if you're in places like... Bali, where I know that they have high levels of copper in their water, which tends to turn all my blondes orangey or yellowy. Um, in those you know, circumstances, I always tell my clients to get a big bottle of bottled water and do that as your final rinse, so you're rinsing out all the uh, yeah. shitty copper. <clears throat> always rinse the salt water out of your hair. 100%. 
It's going to be a conjunction of everything that we're speaking about today. Definitely it seems boring, I know, and I know that you want us to tell you that there is something that you can take. Kind of, there is something that you can take, but it definitely is in conjunction with, you know, all these other tips, and it won't work on its own. You need to be making sure you're doing all these other things on the side, and definitely if you're taking, like, you know, hair growth tablets, but then bleaching your hair every second day, no results are going to be shown. <laughs> but I will say something that really worked for me, I know that this one, every time that I post something about this, it just goes off on my Instagram. And also it goes off on, you know, my clients. I tell them in the salon, they're just so excited by it. And I actually have a lot of people on this product. It's amazing. Um, it's called Viviscal. There is a range, like a hair care range as well. I personally only take the tablets and that is because I have hair extensions. It's just not compatible with it. But definitely the tablets, you take two a day one in the morning, one at night, and they're quite potent, so you need to take them with food. I notice results of my hair growing within eight weeks, but it says that you're gonna notice within three months. You have a before and after on your Instagram? I have a before and after <laughs> on my Instagram, yep, that everyone can view. I I'll link her Instagram yeah. down below. I was dumbfounded. But worked uh, first hand, so she's recommended it. Also, you have to cycle it too. Um, don't just keep using it and think I'm gonna get these constant results. Like I use mine for three months and then stop using it. I was saying this to Cassidy before and I read this one. I was like, please don't. <laughs> Absolutely not. Please come and see me. Honestly, you're doing more damage than you are good. I know that the reason for people wanting to color their own hair at home is because either, I'm sure it's a time thing as well, but mostly I think it's like a money factor. It's going to cost you more money to fix it later and it's going to do more damage than it is going to do good. And if you are coloring your hair at home, please, please, please tell your hairdresser that you have. If you end up going to get it fixed because you will. <laughs> um, tell them what you've done and don't lie because when- They always know. We know everything. <laughs> bleach is like the secret giver, outer -er. Like as soon as bleach touches anything that we tell it not to, it shows you, like your secrets come out. If you're coloring your hair at home and then we go and put bleach on it, you're gonna get a metallic salt reaction where what happens is the plastic like starts dripping off your hair because that's what it's coated in because you've used this amazing box dye. Um, it's you get full of silicon. It's full of silicon. It will heat up really quickly. Your hair will turn to jelly. You'll get banding. It won't ever be a nice even color. Oh, also, back in the day, I remember when I was still using supermarket shampoo and conditioners, yep. my head would always get so hot, hot with the foils. Is that the silicone? Is that yeah. what you were talking about? Yeah. Yeah. That's silicone. So silicone is found in like a supermarket shampoos and conditioners. So your safest bet is to get it from a hair, <laughs> hair salon. Yeah, exactly. Good, right? Average like shampoo conditioner from a hair salon is what? $30 each? Yeah. You, there's cheaper brands and then the, don't get me wrong, there's like high end brands. And, yeah. You know, at our salon we make sure that we sell like three ranges. Three so we've got our yeah. lower, mid and, and high. <clears throat> The lower one's really still important. gonna be better still from the, the market. I use the lower one on my hair. I just came back from Bali. My hair looked like I stuck my head in a PowerPoint <laughs> constantly. It was like the humidity in Bali is ridiculous. Trying to look good is just pointless. Um, and to be honest with you, I found one product that kind of worked for me, but that's because my hair is not like as curly as yours. I don't know if that would necessarily work for you. I had used the Natalie Ann, um, it's Monaco Beach Resort Kit, and I love that it's named that. I took it away with me because it had such like a holiday name. Beachy. I think what people also need to realize is what, like you said, what works for you may not necessarily work for me because every, no two people have the exact same hair no. time. And so it's all about trial and error. 100%. You'll have bad hair days where one curl cream didn't knock the frizz out. Like yeah. it takes it's all about trial and error. We've all been there. You just have to keep like, sure, take recommendations on board and mm. try it. But if you if someone's recommending like a high end, expensive product, try and get a tester and try it first because it may not work. And there's no point blaming that influencer or that model or that exactly. person because some people have beautiful straight silky hair and then there's people like me that are naturally hair grid. As soon as you get out of the shower, this is my biggest one. Like. Don't ever go to sleep with your hair wet. I remember I used to go to sleep with my hair wet because I 
knew that it would come out curlier. Yeah. To leave it curly. Yeah. But that's literally the split ends, hey? Yeah. It's not good for porosity yeah. as well. Like, you want to get that water out as fast as possible. Think about it like this. When you wash your hair, your hair shaft is open like this. There are your split ends saying hi. You want to close them up as fast as possible. So, while it's still wet, within a 30 minute period, you just want to blast dry at least. You know, get it 100% dry. And then when you're going over with a straightener, I find that it stays straighter for longer. You've been blonde for longer and you yeah. would know that it gets so, so pricey. It's not a one-off payment. Being blonde is an investment. Yeah. Any way you want to look at it. Yeah. It's like you wouldn't buy a house and then expect that that house is just going to stay in the same condition forever. You're not going to have any maintenance on it. That would just be a lie. Like there's so many factors that come into it. Like you're going to have to buy more amount of products than you would when you're brunette. You're going to have to have more touch-ups than you would if you were, you know, brunette. Um, they're longer services, so the actual services themselves are going to be more costly because they require more product. It's higher maintenance when like going to the beach. It's like a whole bunch of things that, and it's not just, you know, getting you to your dream hair. It's, you know, <clears throat> the other things that actually add up then and therefore. So I would say, unless you can afford to be blonde, don't do it because you're just gonna damage your hair and you're not gonna be able to look after it. And there's no such thing as going, like I've made the mistake of trying to go to someone cheaper. Yeah. And like Sarah said, it ends up costing me more money when I have to go get it fixed by yeah. someone who is good. There's yeah. no shortcuts to being blonde. There's no, no way of doing it cheaper. It Unfortunately, it is an investment. It costs a lot of money. I've been, I would hate to imagine adding up the amount of money I've spent being blonde. I would also say if a hairdresser is charging you a certain amount that is ten, like on the higher, you know, price point, you have to take into consideration sometimes, yes, they're just, you know, trying to cover their rent, but also the education is what you're paying for. So your stylist education that they've had, you know, throughout the years, and also the products that they're using on your hair makes the biggest difference. Bleach is not just bleach. We at Salon 266 use the Bleach Satique, and the reason why we use that bleach is because of the conditioning agents that the bleach actually contains itself, and the pH levels of the bleach are quite low. It's like protein powder. Yeah. You're gonna have like the ones that are filled with like... Shit. Yeah, shit. And then you're gonna have the ones that are like much more concentrated for what you want, more nourishing, more moisturizing. Fenola is blue based. So if I put Fenola on Cassidy's hair, which she's wanting to tone out yellow, it's going to instantly overtone because blue counteracts orange. <coughs> you have yellow, that's what you want to counteract. So violet counteracts yellow. So you need to go more violet based shampoos. I'm going to say if you're going to use things like Fenola, that you should always mix it in with something that's more hydrating because I find that it's really dehydrating for your hair as well. Yeah. Um, and by mixing it in with something that's just like more clear based or just it's gonna dilute no it. color will dilute it. So you, you can feel safer putting it on in your hair. And also when toning your hair, so like the week or two after I've just gotten my hair done, my yeah. hair takes to toner quicker. Yeah. Whereas the further I'm out from my appointment, the longer I can leave the toner in. Yeah. Why is that? Because your hair is more porous okay. after bleaching it. Yep. So after bleaching it, your hair shows are a little bit a little more bit open. More fragile. A little bit more fragile. Then your natural oils get to it weeks later and yeah. Plus the brassiness starts coming through a little bit more. So the toner that you have put on and in the salon yep. starts to wash out and then you're replacing it with your purple shampoo. Again, it's all about trial and error. Once you find a good purple shampoo yep. and you learn how to use it and how it works for you, mm. as soon as you like, build a good relationship with it and you've worked with it, then you stop accidentally overtoning your hair. Yeah. I don't know why you were told not to brush your scalp. You were told not to brush your scalp. Yes, Satan. If you ever have dry spots on your scalp, what you want to be doing is loosening them prior to washing because as soon as you add water on a dry spot, it kind of just sticks there a little bit more. It kind of like infuses it more into your scalp. Or if it flakes off, it like only sits right at the root, so you get like this loose like skin sitting on the top part of your scalp. Oh, it doesn't yeah. actually, you know, wash and then all when the way it's, out. When there's water in it, it's more dense and harder to get yeah. through. Yeah. So you want to loosen your scalp, like loosen all those dry spots first, prior to washing it or going in the shower. But yeah. also because your hair's more fragile when it's wet, it's better to do ninety percent of the brushing. Yeah. Before the shower when it's dry. So can you? 
get rid of dandruff altogether or is it just something that you have to live with for your life? No, you can, but it will come and go. So right. dandruff is the cause of like either stress, water temperature, weather outside and stuff like that. There's a lot of factors. So many factors. Yeah. Reduce your water temperature is a really good tip as well. So just always like, even if it's the final rinse in the shower, you want to just like make sure that that's like cool on your scalp. Don't leave it like scorching hot when you come out of the shower. So this is just going to be a quick one because it's a long one as well. Um, I posted this on my Instagram page um, and it, it's weird because it actually says my top five tips for blonde hair. <laughs> so, I will leave a link to her, Sarah's Instagram down in the description box. She literally does tips and tricks and everything every day in her stories and her posts. So yeah, just a good one to follow. I'm 99% sure Remington was the hair tools sponsor. And so if they were. <laughs> If they weren't, you're getting a free plug anyway. And it was excellent. I loved it. What kind of a wand was it? Was it like a conical one? I think it was a conical one. Oh, yeah. yeah, it was That's a conical That's how you do one. like the wrapping ones where yeah. no clamp. Love that. It was that. a conical one and it was thicker and went skinny. Yeah, I love your hair like that too. Not like this. Please don't do this with the towel. <laughs> with the towel. Because like you're just oh. telling your split ends that you're having a party and they're all invited. Just pat dry it. Don't, you don't want to cause unnecessary friction. What about putting it up in the towel? Is that bad? I don't like to do that with because I have hair extensions and that uh, yeah, like too much it. tension yeah. and it can like slide them out for but my hair But is it bad for friend. me if I like wrap mm. it up and put it up in the towel? Uh, as long as you're drying it within that 30 minute oh, period. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. How often do you wash your hair? You told me oh my god. Wash your hair. Everyone freaked. <laughs> It actually smells so good. <laughs> it smells so fresh. Oh my god, I mentioned this on my stories that I only wash my hair about once a fortnight and everyone freaked out. Well, some people were like, ew, and other people were like, tell me your ways. This <coughs> comes from, like this, I'm just going to sound like a grub. From a young age, I have always hated showering. I don't know what it is. I still do shower. We just need to chill out. <laughs> I shower daily. But it's a chore to me, I don't like showering. And yeah. my hair is thick, it takes, my hair just is very high maintenance to style, to dry, to straighten, to curl. So I try to avoid that at all costs. It stemmed from a young age, hating the shower. My <laughs> hair is the bane of my existence. Yeah. So from a young age, I haven't washed my hair often. I would wash it maybe once a week. So it's been trained from a young age to know how to absorb the oils. I never get oily, like maybe around the 10 day mark, it'll start to get a little bit greasy, but I always just use my tangle teaser and brush it through. I only wash my hair once a fortnight, which is very rare, but it is possible to train your hair to wash it once a week. 100%. But in saying that, training it's not going to be easy. You're going to have to deal with your hair being greasy yeah. for the first few months. You just need to get over that. It's you just, need it's to willpower. Do, like put training. a little bit of dry shampoo, but that's another thing. I don't use dry shampoo or hair sh hairspray in my hair. Yeah. I don't. I use I only use products that are going to hydrate it, like leave-in conditioner and things like that. I don't use dry shampoo. I don't use hairspray. Good. Because it's just going to weigh it down and make it feel like shit. With hair extensions, I'm going to say. There's so many products out there that are made for like volume and you know, this makes this thicker, but I feel like it's all in the like, appearance of it to actually like actually densify your strands. Like, Well, it, there's not really any, you're born with the hair you're born with, you're either born with mm. thick hair strands or yeah. fine hair yeah. strands. Like if you really want to feel like thickness, like this point up that I have here. Um, hair extensions. Hair extensions. This is oh, all hair a extensions. blunt cut. The blunter the cut will give yeah. the illusion of thicker hair, won't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like if your ends are like ready, let them go, sister, because it's the best thing that you can do to like yeah. chop it and it'll like, you know, a straight line always appears more full than one that has like yeah. a zigzag. The method, your starting point of your hair, how they're applied, how long you've left it for before you get them redone all come into play. I know there's certain hair extension types suited for certain hair yeah. types, but is there one that's to like avoid a good all-rounder sort of? Yes, I would say tapers? tape extensions yeah. and I would say completely avoid wefts. Tape extensions are my actual favorite. Yeah. And you know, if I had tapes hair, and I loved it. So good. Loved like it. if your hair is on the thinner side, 
get less pieces, less weight. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's, but if you've got thinner hair, you don't need as much hair to match the make thickness. yourself feel thicker anyway. Yeah. Generally, it's one or the other. You've got thin hair and a lot of it, or thick hair and not as much of it. Yeah. I've got thick, thick, thick hair. The amount of tapes I had in my head. It's crazy. Fuck. But like, I love that I didn't notice any damage. Obviously, when you take all those extensions out though, your hair's going to feel so thin. You're going to feel like you've got no hair. 100%. It's an illusion though. It's a fun fact, you lose 100 strands of your own hair a day. So yeah. when it's in a tape, it's not going anywhere. So you're not going to notice how many strands of all those days have come out until you take out your hair extensions. Yes. If you have hair extensions in for like eight weeks, that's a lot of days, a lot of hundred strands. Yeah. So it's naturally going to feel, and like honestly, if I took out these hair extensions, which is like so that thin. thick, that much hair, I'm sure I'm going to feel thinner. Or well, I remember thinking when I first got my extensions put in, I was like, there is... Because my hairdresser at the time, Jamie, yeah. she was like, your hair will feel thinner. And I was like, there's no possible way. Like, I have so much, much hair. hair. And I remember sort of feeling traumatized when I got them taken out. Mm. But you just remember, you can't place blame. Like, if you're trusting the person that's putting your extensions in, it's it, not her fault. Your hair is just like, you're literally, my hair doubled in thickness. That's right. With the extensions. Just because you, used to. you have to match the thickness of your hair for them to blend. Yeah. So you're essentially double, doubling the thickness of your hair. So of course, it's always going to feel thinner. Yeah. That's one thing you have to accept and have an open mind to. Your hair will feel thinner, but have faith in the person that you're going but to. But it's not actually thinner. So I would say probably the healthiest method is tape in hair extensions and clip-ins if you're not putting them in the same spot every single day. But again, tape-ins along with being blonde is an investment. Yes. Oh, the It's biggest. almost a bigger investment because they are quite expensive off the bat. Mm. But you can let your hair grow out when, when you go blonde and just deal with the regrowth. It's yeah. no big deal. But your extensions will start to grow down and if you, you have to be able to afford to maintain to get them moved back up. Your yeah. tape-ins will grow down. You have to pay to get them either removed or put 100%. back in. I literally always explain it like that. I'm like, hair extensions are an investment yeah. and your hair care is your insurance. That's it. All right, Q&A. Pumped it down. Yeah. We need to run because the battery's about to die. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much, Sarah, no, thank for doing you this video me. with me. I hope you guys appreciate this and you learn something cool from it or knowledgeable. Go show Sarah's socials some love. Her YouTube will be linked. There won't be anything on it, but she's starting that this I'm year. Starting. Instagram is honestly just daily advice on all hair. It's such a good Instagram to follow. She's also just a really great person. <laughs> so give this video some love. There will be more hair tutorials, things like that coming in the weeks to come. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoy. Again, thank you, Sarah. Thank and you. we will be back with more videos soon. Bye. <laughs> no, you love that. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Pull the key out the ignition. Run your mouth, but I never listen. You hold me back, we'll never last. Keep talking all your shit. Wondering how all this started You left me broken hearted